Today I'm making fall decor DIY ideas for you. They're all new. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first project is going to be a fall fairy homestead. We are going to start with a variety of paint brushes. I have some different sizes here. A variety of paints in any fall color you can imagine some greens, some beiges, of course we have to have orange and gold and a tannish color and then a brown and a chalkboard black. I'm going to use this Dollar Tree Plus little goodie box. Here's that information here for you. And this is what it looks like on the inside. There are five pieces in here, so really good deal. And these are bigger than the other little gnomes they have. I'm gonna use a wood slice. It's got a crack in it, but it's okay for this project because we're going to cover that up. And this is what these look like before I give them a makeover because you know I've got to paint them. This is their first look. And there's our cute little fairy on the pumpkin. There's a little fence with some pumpkins and some grass. And then a mailbox, of course. All right, so we're gonna add our paints to the little paint tray. And if you choose not to make yours over, you certainly don't have to do that. It's just something that I personally enjoy. I'm going to put my spectacles on, grab some of that paint, and just start going over this. It's a very similar color. The paint job on here is kind of streaky. Um, you know, for the price, I totally understand. These are not painted by professionals, and I myself, I'm not a professional. But I want to give it, just really highlight and make this little piece just look as good as it possibly can. And so I enjoy making mine over. I'm going to just go kind of with what the wood grain would be going up and down with my brush strokes because if you go side to side you can see that and it just really doesn't give it the look that I'm going for. So I'm just going to do it my way. I'm going to make it my own. And of course, you know on this channel I always encourage you to make yours your own. Y'all, I wish you could see me right now. It is a hilarity. I am in the bathroom. My grandson is asleep on my bed, right in the room. I have the door open, a robe on my head, a beach blanket over the back of the computer, and every rug I could find spread out on the floor to, floor to muffle out any sounds. So I hope the quality of sound is not too bad in here. Okay, going right along. Now the grass, we all know that in the fall, the grass starts to change colors. So I don't wanna make this just solid green. I'm gonna go over it and trim it up around where that fence is to, uh, you know, just kind of crisp up the edges. But then once it's dry, I'll take that lighter green and kind of stipple that all over the top to give it some depth and to also give it a look as if it is changing, you know, for the next season. And the grass green here, the original color was a little too cool tone for me. I like my warm tones, you know how I am, earthy tones, so I just liked uh, just changing that color up a little bit. Okay, so here are the pieces all made over. Here's the pumpkin house. I also went down the cracks there with a little bit of that dark brown paint, just barely any left on the brush, and I went down all of those little, you can see on every pumpkin I did that, and did a little bit of dry brushing in other areas as well. I brushed a little bit of bronze over the leaves and I have bronze on the little fairy's hair too so I just used what was left on the brush from her hair to put on here. Everything has been thoroughly dried. Here's our little fairy and she has brown hair and I used the uh, bronze on top and then I use some color shift paint on top of her wings All right, so what are we going to do with this piece of wood? If you would like to paint this piece of wood This is my big old Mod Podge brush You can go over the top with Mod Podge and Then let it dry thoroughly then you can paint so that it doesn't soak into your wood 
So that's an option for you. But I'm going to also show you another way to do it. But first, I'm going to cover this entire thing. And then I'm going to go around all of my edges. So this just keeps that live edge from chipping off and um, breaking apart and shedding all over the place. So you can seal it off and then be sure that you let it dry and then go on with your project. So once that top part is dry, you're going to pick out some greenery that you might want to put on there and then get those set aside. And I'll show you how we're going to do the base of this little, I guess it's their little yard or their little area where they live. I'm going to use foam because we're going to be adding greenery. So this is just a piece of foam that came in a table that I ordered online. And I'm just going to try to trim it down so that it fits roughly the shape that I have on this wood slice. Once I get it that way, I'm going to, um, I just right now have my, this is like a pool noodle knife and it works really good for foam and that sort of thing. So I'm going to use it to kind of thin the sides down so that they taper down and are flat against the wood slice but are higher up on the top, almost like a hill would be. And that's the kind of look that we want to have here. This is going to make it where we can put floral and uh, greenery picks and they'll stay in place. If you don't have that type of a knife, you can use a blade, which I'll show you on another piece, or you can use your scissors like this and just start hacking into it. And then once you realize that everything is where it should be, I'm going to grab some of this wood glue, put the wood glue on there with a stick. I'm just going to put it on there like I'm icing the cake. Okay, I'm going to put that all over there. And then after that's in place, I'll be using some hot glue in the middle and I will put a piece of foam on top of that. Press it into place so nothing moves. And then we can uh, move on to the next step of it. I got a little too much glue on the edge, so I'm just going to take that off. Just kind of rub it in a little bit. I'm going to still need the glue. Okay. Now, I know that I want to use, um, I know that I want to use a little, I want to put a heel on here for the house. So I'm just going to kind of shave it down a little bit more. You want it to be where when you put your grass or, you know, turf, whatever you're going to put on top of there, you don't have like a squared corner. You actually want to make it look like a heel. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to make a separate little heel or raised area that we want to put the little pumpkin house on. So I'm just going to cut out a piece that will fit this a little bit bigger than the bottom of there. So I just kind of eyeballed it. And then I'm going to cut this in like an oval shape. And then its sides will be tapered down also so that it makes a nice smooth area for us to put the moss on. Because we're going to use moss rather than grass because I like the brown moss and I think it looks good for fall. So that's how we're going to do that. Okay. So then I know that it's going to fit and I'll have a little extra room on there, which is perfect. I'm going to add a little bit of cool temp glue and press that in place. I just press down for a moment and make sure that it's sticking on there. Then I'm going to use some tacky glue to put the greenery down or the moss down. I got the moss from Dollar Tree. So I'll use the tacky glue because the glue, even the cool temp glue can kind of eat through it and you have to be careful about that. This tacky glue gives you a little more time to dry. It doesn't dry as quickly so you have more time to work putting those pieces of moss down on your on your form. So I'm going to work in just little sections at a time grabbing a chunk of it and you're just pressing 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 down now if you want to use gloves you can do that but y'all know i'm a messy crafter so i do not mind getting glue on my hands it's gonna wash off and having my fingertips exposed i can really feel those areas Ew. to make sure that everything is covered i don't want any open areas where i can feel the foam i want it to be nicely covered between the foam on the top and the foam that is underneath nice transition Okay, 
So I'm just going to add to the side. And I'll just use a popsicle stick to kind of spread that out. You can use a little plastic um, cutlery knife if you want to. And I'm just going to spread that on just, again, like icing a cake. Put that icing on there. And then grab up some more of that and press it down. You don't need a huge amount each time because if you do, it's just going to fall off. So try to get it where it's thin enough that it's pressing down and, you know, of course there is a solution for it. We're going to shake some of it off and then we're going to use a spray adhesive to put on top of it so that everything stays locked in place and none of it sheds and falls apart. So this is how it's kind of going to look, but you want to make sure that you also get it around that entire edge there. Okay, and you can see I pretty much have it everywhere. I can go back and put it in the areas where I can still see the white foam. Like there, there, and it just takes a little extra glue and you just poke the foam on there. And you want to shake a little bit off, take it outside, spray it with the mat. I sprayed one good coat on there and left it overnight. Now you can trim around the edge if you want a nice smooth edge, but that doesn't concern me because, you know, it's supposed to look like nature, so we're going to leave it. Now this little, that's almost like a bridge. I found this in a different pack that I already had here uh, from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to paint it as well and let it dry. And then we're going to start putting it together, which of course is the fun part. So the house is going to be on a hill. Now I'm going to leave it here to show you how long I hold this in place. I'm not just putting it there it's stable enough, but I want that glue to push down into that foam. I'm going to go through the moss and into the foam so that if it was to topple over, nothing will fall off. So putting that pressure on there with the glue really makes a difference. This is the layout I think I want. Just kind of giving it a dry run to see if I like it. And I think I like it something like this. So this is what we're going to do. Gonna start putting that glue on there and pressing it down. Same process as we're gonna just gonna push it and hold it there for several seconds. And then go around in every place we have our little pieces. We're just gonna go ahead and secure those in place. I'm gonna add some on the underneath part of this ladder too, right at the bottom, or this uh, bridge rather. If you wanted to, you could use something to make it look like water going under there, but this is not going to be a water, no water feature in here for me. And this one, this is simply going to be terrain, and it is fall terrain. So I'm just going to push with my fingernail through the foam and kind of wiggle out a little spot to have a flat space to put the mailbox. I know it's going to work there, so I'll grab my glue and put it down and then press that into place and hold it. And the little fairy, I'll put her down right here in the front. She looks so cute. She's just got her leg kind of kicked over to the side like she's foot loose and fancy free. Look at her, it's cute. Okay, y'all, now we get to play around with the greenery. So I'm just gonna grab some stuff that might look like, you know, trees, shrubbery, grasses, things like that because fairies are miniatures. All these little homes are miniatures. So I wanna try to give this the the look of, you know, something that would be possibly in the floor of the forest. Maybe nestled against a tree or a boulder, but hidden nicely. So we're going to add all these goodies around. And this is just one pick that I'm cutting into pieces. And then I also have those little, that little yellow thing over there is just like seed pods off of a piece of fall greenery. Now here I still have a long pick left in the middle. I wanna take that out to make it look a little more natural. And I'll take a piece of another greenery pick and use it to make a stand for this one. And then I do go back and add some hot glue to the bottom of that to keep it in place. So don't worry. All these little picks will have a little bit of hot glue to make sure that everything stays inside of the foam because it's hard to resist touching something like this. So I know my kids are going to want to touch it and look at it, and I don't want anything to fall. Okay, this is how it looks so far. But I know I want to add some of those beautiful Black Eyed Susans in there, so I'm just going to add a few of those. 
and I do add some here and there on the bottom as well but you'll see that later I do take those off because I prefer something with a little more yellow so I do end up taking those off now I've got some pieces of limbs or sticks and um, the one that I just placed down we want it to look like a kind of like a dead tree or something there and then these are the pieces from Dollar Tree I'm just going to add those here and there kind of gives it a transition between the resin pieces and the foam and the moss and then I'm going to make a pick for this I'm just going to put the pick down first and then there's a little hole right in the center and I'll press it down on there and it'll stay in place because it's a little bit bigger than the pick that I chose to put it on and then I'll go down right underneath this fence area and put a little piece here you know you just got to kind of get eye level down there and look at things and and see where you think things might be you know where if it was your little garden where would you plant those things and that's kind of where I put it so there's a piece right there by the fence we're going to put something under here add some yellow there and so now we have some yellow here and there all the way around I hope you like this one I'm also gonna put the video below where I did another fairy in a clock box that was turned out very very nice it's a light up it has a light up feature in it so if you like little fairies you're gonna love that one and I'll be sure that I share that with you so check out the description box for that if you don't know about the crafting cruise getaway you got to check out the information in the description box below because I'm going to share it with you and I really want you to check it out. The next project is a boho fan floral. Okay, so I thrifted this fan. Now, I've seen these before. These have been around probably since the 70s. I know this is not a new piece. This is something that's been around a while. Right? Okay, so I'm going to do something to this to give it more of a rustic look because that's the kind of look I like. I'm just going to go into my antiquing wax with a chippy brush and I'm going to dip into there. I'm going to offload some of that and then I'm going to use this and brush it all over this fan. This is like a, I don't know if you would call it cane or what, but it's soft. Maybe straw, maybe straw. Very, very lightweight. And I'm going to go all over it, just slowly building up the coverage. I have had it for a while now, thinking I might do something farmhouse with it, but I'm thinking something rustic fall would be nice. And it's definitely going to have more of a, it's still going to have that boho vibe, I think. Um, I'm going to be using some colors that I don't normally use in the fall. It's still beautiful though. Okay, so if you get a little too much of that wax in one area, just take a towel and wipe it off. Look at that. That's all you have to do because it's wax and it takes a little while to dry. Yes. So we're gonna put it upside down because this is how we're gonna hang it. And I'm gonna take a little piece of foam. I will cut it into a smaller rectangle. And then I'll take a piece of floral wire. We're gonna use about, it's gonna be about nine inches of it. It's how much I use here. And I'm going to cut that down. Lay it where we want the greeny me picks to be. And then I'm gonna thread it through the back well through the front into the back and pull that piece up and then go over the top of it and go right toward the bottom of it y'all I'm getting notifications it is my sister and niece and daughter they're all excited about something so if you hear that just forgive them we just have a real good relationship and and we get chatty sometimes Alright, so now that we have it on the back and we've wound it tight, we're going to cover it so it doesn't scratch our wall or our door. And I'm just going to use a little bit of glue and a piece of ribbon to hold that in place to keep our surfaces protected. Now we're ready for the fun part. Okay, so you're going to grab whatever type of greenery and florals you like. And I absolutely love this piece. There's some purple in here. I thrifted this, so I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure where it came from. But it's really, it's different. And, you know, I'm always encouraging y'all to think outside the box. So I'm going to have to take that lesson for myself, right? 
just kind of get out there and try some different things. And I think that this kind of leans nicely toward Halloween. If you like to have Halloween that, um, you know, like the purples and greens and things like that for Halloween. So just a little idea if you like following. I'm gonna take that pick and put it right up in the bottom. There are about four leaves on each one of these little picks. And I'm going to cut them down into manageable lengths so they don't pierce all the way through and out the other side. And I'll just put these in the foam. Now add a little hot glue to the end of the pick before you put it in if you would like to do that to keep it in place. This will not be outside, but if you do decide to put something like this outside, you're going to need some Gorilla Glue for that. Y'all, I can tell school's back in. Oof. Okay. Now, we're going to continue along. I was going to use some hydrangeas that match, uh, that had the purple and beige, but for some reason, I was feeling like I needed something a little more wildflowery looking to get that boho cottagecore rustic look. So, I decided to change over to these asters, and then I have a couple of other flowers too, and these all came from Dollar Tree. The other pick that I cut down with the yellow or the cream color flowers, it didn't have a, uh, a label on it anymore, so I'm not entirely sure what those flowers are. But if you know what they are when you see me put them in, feel free to put it in the comments for those who need a little help trying to find their, their pieces of Dollar Tree. Okay. And y'all remember, it's very early in the season. As crafters, we have to put our things out so that you have a chance to see what you need to buy and what you want to do so you can plan your decor for the season. Um, that's why we do that so early. So, you know, if you don't have these things in your store yet, go through your stash from last year. That's mainly what I'm using. So just get the stuff from last year and, you know, give it a shot. Now, you could have stopped at that point if you like more of a minimal look. But you know I'm not going to stop at that point. So I'm going to add two more picks. So there are two picks in the top to the right and left. Two picks to the bottom right and left. And one right in the center. Okay. And when I put the flowers in here. I'm going to make sure that I have those asters twisted. Because those petals come in two layers. And if you twist them with your fingers. It will push those layers apart. And give you a, a broader flower. It will just look like a nicer flower. So if you decide that you want to add some more little pieces in here but you don't want to put a huge piece because perhaps you only have one pick left and you have to divide it or you have a smaller space then you can just go ahead and wrap these up on the bottom with a piece of floral wire and make picks of two and trim it off and be careful here with these wires too because if you get a really thin gauge wire you can poke your finger easily so just be mindful and watch those fingers okay so I'll just do the same thing with the other one, make a little pick, and then with a little hot glue on the end, you can put them right in place. Easy, easy little tip for you. Now, here's another point where you could stop, fluff out your arrangement and leave it at that. Or you can add some little flyaways. Now also, if you have a leaf that's flipped over and you just can't get it to pave, just add a little glue. That's all you have to do, and it'll stay there. I'm going to pull some more of these little pieces out that look similar to what we used in the little village. I'm going to pull those out and add three of those in. One to the left, one to the right, and then one will be in the middle. And then that will fill out this little piece. And complete that project. And then you can just hang it by the loop on top. Y'all, I put out videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. I'd love to have you come see. It's free to subscribe. All right, the next one is a floral frame flip. We're going to use some sheepskin chalk paint. Some antiquing wax. Chippy brush. A regular brush. Then we're going to use some any type of a wall decor decal from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a thrifted sign that I found. This one happens to have some beading on it, and I think it's really pretty, but I want to make the wood darker. I am over all of the pale, colorless, light wood. I need something moody and rich and beautiful. So I'm going to change it. 
I love using antiquing wax for that and there are also a variety of stains and wood tints that you can use. You can also use just a stain or a, rather a paint that you water down and use that as a stain. Certainly any of those things would work. Now all I'm doing here is just adding down a little bit of painter's tape to make sure that I don't get wax all over this part of the picture because I will be putting some chalk paint on here and I don't want the wax to interfere with the bonding of the paint to the surface underneath. So I'm just going to take my little knife here and I am going to cut along those edges and get a nice crisp edge and then I'll start adding this and layering this on. Okay, now I like to build up. I know I want a fuller coverage than I normally do, but I don't want anything dripping and making a huge mess. If I start off light, it is also easier and quicker to dry. So I'm just going to go over it and making sure that I get the beads or the half beads that are on the inside. That's a really pretty detail. So I'm gonna go over those two and then all along the inside edge and the outside edge as well. Really get this good and covered and then dried. Now I got an, I'm gonna take off all of this edging here. And you can see that I did go over in a few spots. And this wax is still damp. It's not, you know, completely dry yet. But you see how easy you can clean that up. This is just a baby wipe. It's not even an alcohol wipe. I'm using my fingernail to press down and go right in the edge there. It's not gonna hurt the wax because I'm not touching the wax. And then after I've taken all the wax off, I am going to use my new tool. This is my Wagner heat tool. And this thing is hot. I'm telling you right now, this thing is a booger. It will have something smoking. You gotta keep it moving and hold it way back. All right, so once it's dry, I'm gonna go in with my sheepskin paint and I'm gonna go all over my image on the inside. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to show y'all because I had asked about the, you know, if anybody knew of a good one. And my husband went and picked one for me and it happened to be the Wagner. So I am very satisfied with it so far. Yeah, so thank you for that for those of you who recommended it. All right, so I'm going to grab the Be Thankful sign. Why? Because I am a very thankful girl. That's why. I'm very thankful for all of you who are taking the time to come to my channel and check out what I'm doing over here and to give me some courage, you know, to, to be who I am and to uh, keep me going. And I appreciate all the positivity. And if y'all have noticed, I've tried to keep it very positive in the comments. I unfortunately had to delete a few things, uh, but you know, that's for all of our benefit. And that's going to happen. But, you know, we don't have to respond when things get ugly, do we? No, we do not. We can just delete and move on. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to focus my energy on positive things and on all of you who are here because you want to be here. So thank you for that. I'm thankful for you. So if you like a minimal look, go ahead and leave it just like that. If not, you can do some embellishment like I'm going to. So this is a pick that came from Do Believe Michaels. I did not get it from Michaels, I thrifted it. Lucky me, right? I love these. Um, the pick is a little different and this is actually oak. I do believe this is oak leaf, which is different than what we usually get, which is maple leaf. So, I was glad to have something a little bit different and I love the richness of the brown and the orange and the yellow in here. Very pretty. Now, I knew when I did this, this was not going to be a symmetrical look. I'm not going for that. I want to do something that's a little different because why? Because I want to make it my own, right? I'm going to use my staple gun and I put these stems right in the tracks and I'm going to just staple right across them. We're using antiquing wax as a color and sometimes the glue does not want to stick to the antiquing wax. So the staples are going to help ensure that nothing slides out of its place. Okay, so I'm going to take the third pick and this is where it's definitely going to be asymmetrical. I'm gonna have more weight to start with off to the bottom left. I'm gonna just push it through one of the staples that didn't go all the way through. You can add a little more glue to that.
Then I'm going to add this one little random pick that I had. I'm not even sure. It just fell out of the rest of the picks that I thrifted. So we're just going to use it because I like it. All right. Then I'm going to take my little sunflowers. And I'm going to... These are felt sunflowers. And they came in a pack on clearance from Hobby Lobby uh, last year. I'm going to add a little wood blocks to get them up off. I don't want to lay them flat down. I want them to be raised a little bit above the arrangement. So I want to use these little blocks that will hold them up a little bit. They don't have stems, so we can't do it that way. And this works as an option to give you some elevation. So we'll have a total of three of these on the bottom. Just like that. Hold them in place, make sure nothing falls off, and then you can arrange your greenery around it or your leaves around it. I want to add well, some little flyaways in here. So, and by the way, flyaways, that term I got from Ramon at home. He uses that term, and um, I used to watch his channel all the time, but now I have a grandbaby, so I watch babies now. I'm going to add some hot glue and add these pieces in. Again, not symmetrical. I did not intend for it to be. But you can make yours that way if you'd like. Always fluffing bows and flowers and leaves, aren't I? Always. Okay, now I decided that I want to add two more of these sunflowers just one in each corner here where it kind of overlaps onto the white because it seemed like a lot of empty space up there definitely if you don't like this you don't have to do it this way i think it looks nice we're going to flip this over and add a hanger on the back and this is me just checking out where i need to put my hanger y'all excuse that i'm going to grab my wire go right through there and then I'll twist it I'll go to the other side and twist it as well and then we will have a hanger nice little hanger for the sign and this is easy to do but you can use whatever type of a hanger you want and I'll use my glue my little uh, gun there and take off all the little stickers on the back. The next is an acorn candy jar. This I found at Dirt Cheap and I got it for a dollar I think but it originally came from Target. You can see it's a salvage piece and it was originally five bucks. I'm only going to use this not that stone I did not use that it was raining and I'm going to use some satin paint and an heirloom white. I'll be using a real brown and a khaki for the acorn for the top and bottom but first off we're going to take our plastic off this is what it's going to look like clean it with alcohol so you get a good adhesion with your paint and we're going to do the spray paint first so that it's easier for our latex or our uh, acrylic paints to stick this is two coats i left them to dry oh it's thundering outside y'all Okay, so once that's all done, then we can start putting our paint on there. So I'm going to use this brush and this color for the bottom. And the top is going to be this brown color. I'm going to put the brown in my paint tray, grab my little brush, and then start laying on the paint. And I know that y'all know how to paint. But, again, I cannot stress enough. If you're doing something circular, circular either from the inside out or from the outside in, Preferably from the inside out, because paint drips downward, right? With gravity, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all over. I'll show you part of it. So if you do go across, like there's a bunch of little cracks and crevices where the layers of the acorn are, then just go back over it and brush it all downward. We're going to do this to the entire acorn. And I am going to put two layers of paint on the top. And I will do two layers on the bottom. Now the lip right there, we're going to leave that the white color. Because too much thickness there in your jar won't close, right? We'll use the khaki color on the bottom. Because an acorn is two different colors. And I think this matches pretty well. 
I'm going to use short strokes on here up and down in two layers and it's almost going to give it the same look when you look at an acorn. It's going to give it like a woody type texture in my opinion anyway. And this is going to be two coats as well and then we're going to let it dry thoroughly in between coats. So if you don't have an acorn like this, what can you do? Well, you could always get a candy jar from Dollar Tree. You get anything that looks like an acorn or a pumpkin and do the same technique, right? Okay, so once it's dried, it's gonna look like this. See all this little, almost streakiness, but the little up and down marks? Yep, I think that looks nice. Here's the top, nice and dark. If you would like to dry brush on this, you can, but I decided to leave it off this time for those of you who don't like that. I've got some scraps of wood. I always pick up stuff and save candle tops. It's just, I have a little hoard of things that I keep. But hey, it works out because I use them in the projects. I'm just going to find a way to kind of stack these on top of one another to give them a bit of a rise and to give them a little bit of a more expensive look. I'm going to actually add wood to it. I'm not going to change the color of the wood. I'm not painting over. I'm just going to use what we have. Then I'll put the darker one on the bottom. And this is going to give us a slight pedestal. Now you can use these from Dollar Tree and paint over those. They're about the same size if you want to do that. And it will look like this. I'll give you a look at that. So if you want to stop here, you can certainly stop right here. And you have a jar. Or you can take a candle holder from Dollar Tree. Paint that the same color as either the bottom of the acorn or the top. And then it will look like this. Of course, it'll be painted. I want that top to be a little more sufficient so I can pull it on and off. So I'm just going to use this little thrift piece. It's just a little, almost looks like a vase when you turn it upside down or a flower pot. I'm going to take a little bit of this stain. This is just some wood tint. I love it because it doesn't have any smell and it doesn't doesn't stain your hands. I'm just going to use a baby wipe to put that on. And I'm going to brush that all over there. Because this is going to be part of what we're going to use to open the top. It's just going to be like the base of it. You want to be sure that it is dried completely. Then I'm going to add some hot glue. And I'll sit it right on top of that. Now to cover the hole in the top, you can use, well, I'll show you in just a minute what you can use. Let's put the leaves on first. <laughs> Shall we? Shall we put the leaves on since that's the order we're going in? Let's do that. So these are just two pieces of leaves and I put them together. I am going to use a little chess piece or checker piece. Put it on top because I think it looks better than the flat piece. And then we'll add another leaf on the other side. Now, that's almost complete. I think we probably need to add one more thing to it. How about some banana saltwater taffy? Absolutely, the best saltwater taffy in the entire universe. Thank all of the piece. This one. Okay, now you can put your top back on. All right, y'all. Remember I told you I was gonna do a new staging area for the fall? I'm so excited. Look. I got a new area for the fall, and it is right beside our Halloween area. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and giving this channel a thumbs up will help YouTube discover my channel and give it to more people who will also enjoy making projects of their own on a budget. These are our four pieces that we did today. Our little boho fan up there, a little floral. And here's our thankful sign. It's our framed sign. While y'all are looking at these, I just want to say again, thank you for being here today and spending your time with me. Lots of creators are putting out fall and Halloween content right now. And that you took your time to come over to my channel and check it out means a lot to me. I really do appreciate that. I also want to give a shout out to my sister at Tales from an Empty Nest. She does recipes and all kinds of good desserts and foods and quick things and family related things that kids like. So if you want to run over to your to her channel, her name is Tammy. She's doing really good work over there and her channel is growing and I'm so proud of her. So go check that out and tell her I sent you. Let's take a walk through the village here, y'all. Look at this. Look at it. Oh, I would love to live here. Isn't it cute? I enjoy these projects so much and I just 
really, really, really love creating and crafting. And I hope that you do too. I think you do since you stopped by. And I do thank you for stopping by today. I'll see you again very soon. Go find some joy in your day. Bye.